an explanation of why I believe the requested waiver of OCP policies, uh, some of the policies are invalid and violate sections 31, purpose of the plan, and section 40, uh, compliance with the plan of the Planning and Development Act 2007. Uh, according to Design Regina's land use planning topic sheet, the reason for the development of a new official community plan was to update and strengthen policy objectives in the existing Regina development plan thus reinforcing the city's vision as a vibrant, attractive, inclusive, and sustainable community. Despite this expressed objective for the preparation of the new plan, the proposed discretionary waiver of overall conformity with the plan and policy requirements included in secondary and concept plans would eliminate, not strengthen, the official community plan policies. For example, as stated in 14.291 to 14.296, the city wants to waive the right to conform to the official community plan and any other secondary plans like the transportation master plan, waive or vary the location of various land uses, densities, open spaces, school sites, civic sites, activity centers, transit and transportation routes and linkages the integration of new development with exist, existing development, any plan staging of development, including roads and utilities, and any other matter the city deems necessary. In addition, the city wants, as stated in 14.301 to 14.304, the right to waive density targets, housing objective guidelines, and policies for complete neighborhoods for the design and function of districts, neighborhoods, etc., as well as the development of a strategy for the adoption of detailed concept plans, social, environmental, and cultural issues. As a result, secondary plans, which as stated in section 14.24, are required of the plan and thus become an obligation under the Planning and Development Act 2007, will be rendered non-existent. Secondary plans are detailed and area specific and are amendments to the official community plan. As a result, they have the same authority and effect. They must adhere to the same requirements as the official community plan, which is ratified by means of a bylaw. As a result, secondary plans are subject to the same rules as the official community plan and must be amended accordingly. Any zoning change changes must be consistent with the secondary plan and the official community plan. Proposed zoning changes that are inconsistent with the secondary plan must be amended in the same manner as with the official community plan. Official community plans, secondary plans, and any existing and, oh, and any ensuing or companion documents, including the zoning bylaw, must be in conformity with each other and section 40 of the Planning and Development Act 2007, which states in part that the municipality is bound by the plan. And from the time an official community plan or any amendment takes effect, it is binding on the municipality and any other persons, associations, or other organization, and no development shall be carried out that is contrary to the official community plan. When I inquired about the city's intention to waive certain policy requirements like conforming to the official community plan, any secondary plans, and other matters itemized in 14.29.1 and 14.29.6, I received in part the following reasons. In terms of the city's right to waive certain OCP requirements, this would only be done in exceptional situations where there is practical or beneficial reasons to do so, while ensuring conformity with the PDA, allowing the city to waive certain requirements in exceptional situations, acknowledges that unique situations do present themselves from time to time, which require tailor-made solutions. Although the justification for wanting the right to waive certain official community plan requirements may seem reasonable. The first and most important consideration is adherence to the official community plan 
and subsequently the Planning and Development Act 2007. I believe the waiver of requirements that are included in the official community plan and secondary and concept plans is ultra-virus and would violate Section 40 of the Planning and Development Act. Therefore, the matter of the requested waiver should be referred back to the City Administration for reconsideration. Respectfully submitted to Regina City Council the 16th day of December 2013 for inclusion with the Design Regina Official Community Plan Bylaw 2013-48 documents. I welcome any questions. Thank you, Ms. Staff, for your presentation. Are there any questions of the delegation? Councilor mm -hmm. Fraser. Thanks for your presentation. Um, can I just ask what, what community you live in? I live in Regina. S sorry, are, are you involved with the community association or a neighborhood association? Oh, yes, Al Ritchie. Okay, great. Are you familiar with their uh, community plan? They don't have a neighborhood okay. plan. Okay. And the cathedral does. Sure, yeah. You, you used to be on council. Uh, that's right. And, and were you here what, when those community plans came to be? I was here when the, for, when the present uh, plan was adopted for the city of Regina um, in 1979-1980. So I was involved and I understand what the policy requirements were. Okay, exactly. Okay. Thanks for that. I, I'm just curious if there's any specific examples. Like, I, I think I understand the, uh, the, the nature of your concern and there's some questions to, to flush out of that, but is there any specific examples uh, you can share of, of where you see a potential conflict maybe between neighborhood plans and the OCP? <laughs> well, um, let's put it this way. When you write, a, I'm also a, a qualified municipal administrator. I have retired. When you write a bylaw, you start with the purpose and intent of the bylaw. Everything that you put in that bylaw, and the bylaw in this situation is the official community plan because it is authorized by bylaw 2013-48. Everything in the bylaw must run consistently. You can't, in the, in the body of a bylaw, say this is what we're going to adhere to as you have said in 14.24, and you must have secondary plans, and then say in 14.291 to, I think it's six, say, but no, we're not going to conform. We're going to do something else. You have to be consistent. Sure. And I did write a, a community plan. I did write one under the auspices of community planning. I also wrote the zoning bylaw, the companion zoning bylaw that went with it. I do understand what it is, how it's done. Took me a long time, but I did. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Councilor Fraser. Councilor Dahl. Thanks, Your Worship. You come before when we have discussed uh, the official community plan, so I'm going to just deviate slightly from your comments and ask you: Have you read the document? Uh, have as, I read as, it? As, as posted, you know. I haven't read oh. all 51 pages. No, I haven't. No. Okay. No, I haven't. But um, I did read the alterations, and it was specifically stated. Okay. Our, our comments tonight were to be focused on that. Thank you. So if you're okay, I'm just going to go backwards a little bit. Certainly. To, to, to the best of your judgment, is what we're getting before us, not on that technical nature, but is this reflective of, of the community's discussions? Is this reflective of what people had asked us to consider in a very large-scale sense. That's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, yes. I think if... Uh, my problem is that I don't believe that what is being asked for in terms of uh, waivers conforms to that. I understand. Which is part... I think it's part A uh, and B, uh, and I think the neighborhood plans will become the secondary plans and B attached or addendums to that. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Dr. Donald. Other questions of the delegation? You can return to the gallery and then we'll consider the next delegation. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, the next delegation is uh, John Klein. Uh, good evening, uh, 
um, Mr. Mayor and uh, City Council. Uh, I wish to speak to the Design Regina process and the resulting document. Uh, first, I congratulate City Council and the City Administration for nearing the end of a years-long uh, consultative process that has produced a document that can help transform Regina into an even better place to live in harmony. I look forward to other projects as engaging as Design Regina and hope you all appreciate the opportunity such process uh, provide uh, you to work with your city's most enthusiastic uh, planners and policy participants. Uh, regarding one proposed addition, uh, I'd just like to point out um, that the flood regions that would have uh, buildings blocked by provincial requirements uh, are not unsuitable land between uh, flood periods. Uh, the flooding region beside the multi-use pathway north and south of Assiniboine Avenue uh, would make an ideal community garden location. Uh, with a potential uh, irrigation source nearby and no building development potential, uh, seasonal garden use by citizens in the uh, surrounding neighbourhoods would be something I'd be excited to see the city pursue. Uh, thanks. I'll take questions. Thank you, Mr. Coyne, for your presentation. Question number three is Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, thanks for your presentation. This uh, seems to I'm just wondering, do you, do you represent a broader group in this, or do you... Just no, just speaking on behalf of myself this time. Okay. Do you currently use the community garden? Program? Yeah, I do. Uh, right now, I, I use um, uh, community garden uh, in South Zone uh, uh, on Grant Road, and I've also uh, put in place uh, the steps to get a community garden put in at my uh, uh, condo location in the next year. For my but do you think this uh, sort of request would sort of jive with the general uh, the consensus among people who use the gardens that need more space? Uh, I think probably so. Uh, the gardens uh, on Grant Road, uh, despite being far from just a thin row of uh, houses and a few um, apartments right there, uh, like the other side, they're uh, bounded by the highway. Uh, there's over 200 gardens there, and they frequently fill up. Uh, they have to uh, turn people away from certain spots that are, fl are uh, frequently flooding out, so they lose a few uh, uh, plots occasionally. and. Uh, it's my understanding, anyway, that garden space can be hard to find. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Councilor Fraser. Other questions? Thank you, Mr. Klein. You can turn to the alley and move to our next delegation.